over, you can sit there and just slowly drag the bait. Just like that, and then you get a bite. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. I'm trying to keep it down a little bit today on this old Sunday. I'm actually about to teach you guys how to throw a shaky head today. I had a lot of comments by everybody saying, you know, how do you throw a shaky head? For a lot of people, it's gonna be really simple since they've been probably throwing a shaky head for a while, but I thought I'd make this video for the people who haven't. I haven't really thrown one much, don't really know what a shaky head is. And it is one great way to catch some fish. I can tell you one thing. If you cannot get a bite on anything, I highly suggest that you throw a shaky head you will get some bites on that. So today I actually brought out a few packs of trick worms. I brought some natural colors and then I brought some dark colors as well. This one is watermelon slice. So let me let me show you. It's like a split color. It's got a little bit of like green pumpkin on top. And it's got like a watermelon right on the bottom. So it's like a darker color. It's not it's not too light. And then I also have just a regular watermelon seed worm right there and uh, one right here as well. And this is the bigger one, this is the smaller one. And then uh, I got a few shaky heads in here that we're gonna be using. You can actually get these at Walmart. These are just the little spot remover shaky heads. That's what they're called. You can get them at Walmart, fairly inexpensive. You can get standard old little trick worms at Walmart as well. Really simple. I was gonna take you there today, but I currently do not have enough time to go do that right now. So we're about to go out there. We're gonna tie this bad boy on my rod. If you guys are wondering which one I'm using, I'm using a fake chrome by 13 fishing then I got an old concept a reel right here and this is on 15 pound cigar fluorocarbon and Vizex. And a lot of you guys are saying Noah why are you throwing a shaky head on a bait caster I'd say around 90 90 to 95 percent of people are going to throw one on a spinning rod just because it's a lot easier to throw it's a light bait you can get it out there it's more finesse on a spinning rod but I I use a bait caster I don't use spinning rods often at all if I do it's on a Ned rig or it's on a drop shot so I am gonna put mine on a bait caster today and I'll teach you guys a little bit about that. But let's go ahead and tie this bad boy on and get out on the water. All right, everyone, as you guys can tell, I got my old shaky head right there. Just a little 3 16 ounce head. Like I said, this is a spot remover. Then I got that little finesse worm by Zoom on. You can also throw the little shaky head worms that they actually make. Um, it has a little pointier end on it. It's not like the standard old finesse tail. But I'm going to start off by fishing. I actually see a fish right here. I spooked him. He saw me. If you guys are wondering when you're going to be throwing a shaky head, it's just a it's a standard old finesse bait, guys. It's just like if I was going to take a drop shot or, you know, the Ned Rig or any other finesse bait out here on a lake or on a pond. And it all just depends. This is, this is one of those baits that you're going to want to have on your boat at all times or have with you at all times. Because when these fish are super finicky, say it's bluebird skies out, it is super rough conditions, you know, zero to no wind, pretty much like today, except there is some clouds out. This fish are really lethargic, whatever whatever the case is, you know, that pressure's really high. You're gonna need a shaky head. You know, when these fish are slow, this is the perfect bait to throw in and trigger those fish to eat. And one thing I'm gonna show you guys right now, as you guys can tell, I got a little bit of grass on this thing. Right there. That is one thing with a shaky head. If I could pick between a shaky head and an old Texas rig right now, I'd be throwing a Texas rig, me personally. This thing's gonna be really good to throw on like a hard bottom. You can throw it on some rocks as well. Um, I tend to throw that old Texas rig. For an example, when I'm out in the Savannah River and I'm fishing in all those little trees, all those little layovers that are in the river and all those you know trees that are broken down, hanging over the edge, I'm gonna be throwing a Texas rig. You know, th these things are just like tools. I feel like, you know, some people don't understand that when it comes to fishing, you know, it, it all depends on the conditions, whether I'm gonna throw this or I'm gonna throw a spinner bait or whether I'm gonna throw this or I'm gonna throw, you know, a little Texas rig. And it's all gonna depend on the conditions, guys. Just think of all these fishing baits as tools. So when you're coming out here, just figure out what you're doing, figure out the conditions, figure out what you're gonna have to throw for the day. So pretty much I'm gonna teach you guys how to work this thing now. It's very, very, very simple. What you're gonna do, you get your old shaky head, cast them out there. All right, let them hit the bottom, just like any other slow moving bait. And there's a ton of different approaches to this, all depending on the day or how the fish want it. You can simply drag it. All right, simply just dragging this thing on the bottom. Maybe pop your rod every once in a while, just like that. And it just depends on the day. Like this, this that's more of a slow, slower approach to a shaky head. Most of the time when I'm throwing a shaky head, especially in this grass, it's gonna be a little hard. If you're fishing areas with a lot of grass, you're not going to be wanting to drag that thing because it's going to get a lot of grass and weeds up on it. So knowing that this place has a lot of grass, I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to start popping my bait. I'm going to just shake it. So you guys can tell just hopping that thing off the bottom. 
just like that. Slightly just shaking that thing, hopping it back to me. You get bit like that. Just like that, little old bass, nothing big. But that, that was as simple as it gets right there. Pretty little fish. I mean, nothing big, but man, that's a, that's a beautiful bass. Right there, as you guys could tell, I was hopping this bait. I have a little bit of grass on it just from when I was fighting that fish. But instead of dragging it, I was hopping it in these conditions right here. Not only the conditions, but how the pond's set up. And there's a lot of grass, it's not just a hard bottom. So I'm not trying to, I'm not letting the shaky head fall down in that grass. I'm really keeping it moving. If I get, if I pop in my rod, what's happening is when that shaky head hits the bottom, it's getting a little bit of grass on it. When I pop my rod, it's gonna pop all that stuff off. If I'm dragging it, it's just gonna, it's gonna get it a lot deeper in there. Popping my rod like this, simple. If it was a place a little bit more hard of a bottom and it didn't have all this grass, I would work it a lot slower. So I throw my bait out there, let it sink. Simply just shaking it into my rod like this. Hence the shaky head, you know? See, I have a lot of grass on me now. So what I'm gonna do is pop my rod. I'm gonna spit all that grass off that bait. That's one thing that you're gonna have to think about when you're out there fishing, just depending on the areas that you're fishing and how, you know, the bottom is. You guys just missed a good little sight fishing moment right there. Ooh, I got him good. <laughs> I jerked him right. I just saw him cruising along the bank right there. Slipped right in, twitched it a few times, just gobbled it. So pretty much as you guys know, we started off at that pond with a lot of grass. And I like I usually wouldn't throw a shaky head with the pond with a lot of grass. I'd throw like a Texas rig or you know this and this and that. At this pond, it's got a hard bottom. This is where I would throw a shaky head personally. And uh, cause I'm not gonna get a lot of that grass on there. It's gonna be a lot easier to throw. And uh, we're gonna catch a lot of fish on it, I promise you. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this thing out here. At this point, it's gonna be a lot easier to hop this thing slowly on the bottom or drag it. Cause as you could tell at the other pond, I pretty much had to, you know, pop my rod the whole time cause it was getting grass all on the bait. That's not ideal, but I wanted to show you guys that just because when you guys are fishing ponds, 90% of the time, they're gonna have a lot of grass on them. I already know cause a lot of you guys comment that, you know, what, what do I throw out there because you know there's a lot of grass on my bait so it's gonna make it a lot easier when you're in a place with a hard bottom and not a lot of nasty grass Woo. I was just about to tell you guys what I was doing and he just grabbed it there we go Oh, beautiful bass right there. Pretty guy. Nothing big. Man, they fire hard for the size of them. Let's get a little release on this guy, and I'll show you guys exactly what I was doing. Pretty bass. Woo! So, everyone, this is exactly what I was doing out here. I don't have a lot of that nasty grass to bother me out here on the bottom. Throw my bait out there. Right when it hits the bottom, simply just shaking the end of my rod. Shaky head. Simply just bouncing that bait right off the bottom. Really not much to it, just gently just bouncing my rod. Boom, 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 boom. See if we can get a good cast out here and hook another one. Right here. Wait till your bait hits the bottom. Bounce your rod. Simple as that. Good little finesse approach for these bass out here, especially when they're super finicky like this. To sum this up, everyone, are you video? sum this up everyone very simple i mean a shaky head very very simple i want to sit there and throw it in the grass i would use a different you know like a senko or something for that you know you can throw a weightless senko above all that stuff so it's not getting all down in it um you're just a standard you know texas rig senko i throw this on a hard bottom you can throw this along rocks you can throw it in some old brush piles you can throw it around docks that's what i do on lake lanier you know throwing this thing around docks throwing around brush piles and i uh, also on some little points and you know rock rocky areas you can throw an old shaky head and catch a bass i would not throw this in grass that's the thing if i was i would fish it how i was showing you guys in the beginning of the video that's kind of why i showed that and it's as simple as just throwing the bait out there and how i like the rig just simply pop my rod as i was talking about or you can sit there and just slowly drag the bait just like that and then you get a bite then you cut whoa then you catch fish right just like that just like that baby simple as that as you got that was kind of crazy that was a good point right there you saw me popping my bait and then i slowly started to drag it 
and then that's when he hit it. So he wasn't eating it when I was popping it. When I started to drag it, he bit it. So that's kind of putting a pattern together. You know, those fish today, they might want you dragging it instead of popping it. You know, they might be a little bit slower, more lethargic, and they want you to drag that bait, but a little beautiful bass. There's one last thing I would like to talk about real quick is pretty much picking the colors of your shaky head. Like I said, just using a little finesse worm. You can get them by Zoom or, you know, Z-Baits makes theirs or Killer as well. Um, all, all, all the other companies, they really make a little shaky head worm, just a little finesse worm. Um, I know Zoom makes the actual shaky head worms with the pointy tail, but I don't tend to get those all the time. I mean, you can just throw a little trick worm on there as well. Works just as fine. When picking out colors though, if you're in a dirty water pond that has a lot of muddy water, you know, it's fairly dirty, doesn't have much visibility, I would either go with like a June bug, a black and red or like kind of like that color that I had like a darker color um if I'm fish, fishing a pond that's like more clear water it's got a little bit of visibility it's a lot more clear it's not like chocolate milk I'm gonna throw like my green pumpkins my watermelons watermelon red watermelon orange all those natural colors like that but overall everyone if you guys enjoyed this tip video be sure to pepper that like button up thank you guys so much for the support all the support on the latest videos has been amazing I want you to comment below on what tip video you would like to see next because I'm gonna be kind of going down the list on what you guys want to see that's why I made this one also be sure to click that subscribe button also press that little tiny bell right next to it so it sends you post notifications after every upload thank you guys so much for the support i love you guys so much i'll catch you guys in the next video i got sky like the brother man uh i cry cars getting hella bears uh i got a bra from the motherland uh i got shooters with us uh. i get it get it up uh. anyway uh pull up skirt in the hurricane uh i cry cars cook every day uh i get money up uh. every day uh